Well, we're reviewing the Coronation Top 20 Fund today. Now, the managers of that, Neville Chester, a familiar name in the fund management circles in Pallavi Ambika, launch date October 2000, fund size 12.92 billion rand. Uh, the objective there, the FTSE JSC Top 40 Index and the TR cost sitting at a 1.67%. So, Quibi, uh, take us through the returns we've seen from this fund. Yeah, I mean, I think firstly here, yeah. Big fund, number one, one of those mainstay funds in the industry. So if you say to people in the industry, look, where, where are you investing your money? People would say Coronation Top 20. It always invariably comes up in a conversation, uh, either, either with, a, with a financial planner, with people giving advice. People would always mention the Coronation Top 20, top 20 fund. Let's just have a look at some returns for the uh, Coronation Top 20 fund. And this is a, a chart that you're obviously quite familiar with. It shows you the fund's relative return. That's in the blue in the in the blue shaded area relative to the JSC top 40 index which in this case obviously is the benchmark and you could see that there's periods obviously of significant outperformance there quite frankly being one in 2009 and in 2008 obviously some underperformance and you can just see over time how it's actually just you know trending on the on the outperformance side and I mean I must say that in a top 40 kind of world you know you've got a limited size kind of spectrum which you're looking at and this obviously makes it uh, makes it a tough benchmark uh, to beat also obviously lots of co you know, concentration there as well there you can see some returns 12 24 36 months and those five-year numbers at 60 months those are annualized and uh, let me just give you the number of years since launch and this is a per annum number 22.4 percent per annum relative to a benchmark here 15.9 percent I mean Roland, I mean, those are, those are fairly decent returns, and I mean, warranted that, uh, that total expense ratio of 1.67%. Yeah, they've, they've certainly done well. Um, I, I would definitely categorize this fund as a, um, a, a yield fund, especially at the moment, or a value bias. So generally, you'll find in periods when the market does badly, those defensive funds do really well. Um, I don't necessarily like the top 40 as a benchmark. I know it is the benchmark for the fund, but uh, we always have to think about benchmarks that are fair and relevant. Um, what could be more fair and relevant, though? I'll tell you. Um, if, you if you're looking at a fund like this, which is structurally underweight resources, and mm -hmm. the Osher Index is very heavily weighted in resources, it's not that relevant, right? Yeah. Um, if you're looking at the fact that they are defensive, in other words, they have a high yield or a, a lo low PE or a, a value bias, um, you probably would want to compare them to a, a high yield index such as the dividend plus index which mm -hmm. is also done really well mm -hmm. and there's no active management in that so uh, i'm not saying there's anything wrong with this index but uh, if you want you something that's more correlated one. if you want to understand if they've really got skill you've got to look at what is what is more fair and, mm -hmm. and, and relevant than this but certainly the fund has done really well I mean, the majority of, of, of stock selection happens within the top 40 in any case. So that would be the first port of call for any asset manager. Look at stocks there before you kind of move to mid caps and small caps down the kind of size spectrum. So, I mean, it's not surprising to me that uh, you've got a fund manager who says, look, let's concentrate on this. Let's do some proper stock selection and some proper fundamental analysis. And quite frankly, we can then build something which is actually quite defensive. And hence, it's, it's popular with folk that are, that are retired or trying to, to, to live off capital. So, I mean, what, do they have 20 stocks in this top 20 fund? How does it work? Yeah, I think the, the, the philosophy behind the fund, which is, which is a good one, is that a lot of um, active managers are criticized when they get beyond a certain size because how do you buy the, the juicy shares, which tend to be smaller mid-cap kind of companies that are less liquid, and still deliver that kind of return? So what they have done here is they've said, okay, we will apply our skill to really liquid shares only, and for that reason we can justify a bigger fund size than mm -hmm. other active managers who are working below the, the, the top 40 kind of universe. So from that aspect, it's a, it's a nice story. And, it and that's why they can have that, that low cost there. Yeah, the scale. in terms of execution, yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, um, let's, let's, I mean, you're going to talk about those top 10s. Let's just put those up on screen. Just have a look at the top 10 holdings for, uh, for, this, uh, for this fund. And you can have a look at the concentration there. Right at the top, the MTN group at 9.9%. Anglo-American, big miner there at 89 And then it obviously moves all the way down yeah, to MMI holdings at the bottom. We can, we can really see now the, um, the actual bias in the fund. Um, and I, I think it is quite a structural bias because it hasn't really... Uh, change that much in terms of the fact that they're chasing yield here. Most of these companies in here, seven out of the ten, have a higher dividend yield than the, the benchmark. So um, shouldn't we use the SWIX maybe, which has got less weighting in resources like they have, mm -hmm. is maybe a question. But uh, they're clearly a, a value-focused fund. And then the other thing is that um, they are 
they are underweight um, resources. So what we have here is a situation where if resources do really well over the next six months or a year, and they are cheap at the moment, then unless they change their portfolio quickly, um, they, they're going to potentially miss out on that kind of... But Neville, you know. Chester has been around for some time. Absolutely. Uh, I assume that he, he realises the value perhaps in resources. One can yeah, only I mean, look, I mean, these are, I mean, uh, these are stalwarts in the industry. Coronation is a name in the industry that's been around for a very, very long period of time. And let's face it, they haven't built a brand, you know, by not delivering p performance numbers. Unfortunately, that is uh, an issue with any active fund, manage fund manager, is the fact that you might miss out on the next, on the, on, you know, on the next cycle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, resources at the moment continues to be favorably, favorably priced. But you've got a market which is favorably priced resources on the one side of the equation and then very expensive kind of retailing stocks and, uh, and, and food stocks on the other side of the equation. And then obviously with the vice brands also, again, clumped yeah. in on that side. Roland, what would your view be on the limitations of a fund that only chooses big cap, top 40 stocks? Of course, there's dividend pay there, but uh, you know that of course limits the universe and there's opportunities to get into the value space. Look, it's a trade-off and, and obviously the fund manager has to play this game and it's quite a tight game when you're looking at sort of the very large companies. The benefit is that you've got the ability to get in and out very quickly because they're liquid, so you can change your view much more quickly than a small cap, mid cap kind of fund. If you wanted to protect this fund with derivative overlays, you can because these are liquid shares that you can get a price for and, and put some derivative, uh, derivatives on the, on the fund. But the, the downside of this obviously is that you are looking at the most researched kind of funds out there. They are, because they're liquid, very efficient and everyone is playing in them, so it's very hard to find that extra bit of outperformance mm -hmm. that everyone else is missing. The alpha. The alpha. I like it. It's better than the beta. Sorry, <laughs> Roland. We'll leave it at that. <laughs>